Uh, the optical gas becomes too thick. That means if we don't have any signal back from the seafloor, we cannot derive water depth with this technology. So there are other technologies to go further, but if you need high resolution asymmetry, then you have this uh, condition. That means under very turbid conditions, it is not possible, or the accuracy is at least reduced. So, for example, all your conditions here outside uh, very quite turbid conditions. Um, Asymmetry retrieval is at least reduced, but there are further ways. So, if you do multi imagery processing, then to overcome this whole part. But if you never have a signal back from the sequel, then you cannot directly, directly realize, uh, um, theorize and what are this. Another product type here again is the um, habitat coverage of those islands, just uh, as an example. Further, Example is hydrographical applications. So there are many areas, of course, which are totally unmapped, or where the maps are maybe 200 years old, it goes back to James Cook, or usual, usual cases that asymmetry maps are maybe 10, 20 years old, because it's very expensive to send, of course, ecosystem ships. So, so there's a high demand to fill this uh, information then in many areas, also with uh, more um, up-to-date maps. So uh, we are doing at the moment for the U UK hydrographical office different uh, surveys. They will find out and want to establish a new satellite based standard to, int to be introduced to the hydrographical applications. Can I just ask one question? Yes. I think the previous slide, the comparison of the. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> this one? So the previous, uh, this one? Yes. Does it mean that the accuracy is uh, good until about. 15 meters or so, and the deeper depth is also accurate. Yes, so as deeper you come, so at a certain depth, so it is true, maybe from 20 meters, the accuracy here, will, the inaccuracy will increase, because we have less and less signal back from the seaport. And, uh, but it shows you still have information, so that means that where you don't have any information, this is still information. Um, so it depends on your requirements, but that's true. What is this? Your satellite space, um, the resolution that you were using was 2 meters. Yes. So, how does that 2 meters uh, translate to accuracy in terms of depth? That means if I were to use a media resolution satellite image, uh, would I get worse off estimation of this depth profile? Yes, well, first of all, you have to compare that if you have a uh, 2 meter sample grid and compare this with a 30 meter sample grid, of course, it's already a different measurement. So, to compare this and this uh, in situ measurement, you must also integrate the in situ measurements over those 30 meters. Then, we have in addition, of course, also uncertainties in the location. That means uh, for the 2 meter pixels, uh, we, we may have. Uh, yeah, by plus minus 2 meter again, in a, a spatial inaccuracy, so horizontal. The same for the 30 meter pixel. And now I must understand your question again better. Can we get, can we get the same, or I mean, not that much worse off in terms of the depth of the water? Because you're talking about horizontal resolution, but not about the depth. Uh, well, also, the vertical resolution, it is, so we process it currently in 5 cm to 10 cm steps. So that's the interval where we uh, produce uh, the results. Then here, in, in the first 1 km, it makes sense to, pro well, this, uh, this 10 cm grid makes still sense. But after 2 meter, you have a look to the, well, to these graphs. But, well, then I, I would say the accuracy is up to 8% what we know. But here we must also take into account that, that we have uh, in the situ measures and the satellite measures horizontal inaccuracies. So if you shift those images again, you easily retrieve an error which is larger, depending on the horizontal structures of your, your area. So we do not know finally where all the errors come from or where the differences come from. But we have, that's very sure in, in satellite images, it's not as accurate as the one atmosphere. So you should not expect that. You should think about that's just the methodology which, which has a certain accuracy, but well, uh, which can be implemented to use in, in addition. Because well, 
still many areas you don't have any any echosonic measurement or any update since 20 years, and then this is still much better to integrate with this uh, than nothing. So don't don't look always to the uh, to the absolute accuracy, which is still quantitative. Be, be in mind also uh, that if you make an echosonic measurement, that you cannot do it everywhere. So for example, in a, in Mexico, they regularly uh, go ramp with the boat to the coral reefs because they don't know that there are some reefs. So this is easy to do than first uh, satellite retrieval, and then if you want to know a very accurate where you send ships, send an exoning boat. Uh, yes. Well, these are now just different visualizations because for UK hydrogroup. Hydrogen office, we work also in the Mediterranean. See, this is another area. Then, this is another sensor satellite. Uh, it is rapid eye combined. Then, this is a land elevation model also derived from satellite. This is in, uh, 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 close to Abu Dhabi, an island where we clearly see not only the impact of the dredgings here, but if you look to, maybe you can still resolve if you see even then that here are the pipelines uh, uh, lying on the ground. So it is sensitive, but it's not always such sensitive if you have, for example, turbid, turbid conditions and inaccuracy increases very clearly. So we must uh, be aware about those inaccuracies. That's the key point. Yes, finally, well, this is Indonesia. This are just for the examples. Tinian also from here, from uh, in Asia. Well, we have different accuracies. We can do this with a wide range of different uh, satellite uh, sensors, rapid eye, work view, even Landsat and 30 meter resolution. The good point about this is if we have repeated uh, imagery, then we can apply other algorithms to take into account the uh, conditions under varying optical conditions, under varying turbidity conditions. But this is at the moment under development still. But we will launch from WorldView because WorldView has a good spectra and spatial resolution. So we have a digital, an OEM agreement with Digital Globe. This is the best capable high resolution sensor. And uh, in combination with the lower resolution, we can now start offset production that we uh, uh, do. That means we will pre we prepare larger areas and then uh, step by step on demand. So if we know that certain regions are requested frequently, let, let us know and we will take into account into the production. Yeah. Yes, water quality. So uh, it's a little bit, uh, from the technology point of view, it's a little bit more simple. Still, you need a completely physical based processing chain, so it's, uh, as I mentioned before. But here we can do water quality if the water is optical depth and we can correct for shallow waters up to only a certain limit. So it's the opposite case. Uh, dredging monitoring is one typical application where uh, we apply this, and where it's very strong, finally. So if you, to map the dredge room, but not only to map it uh, qualitatively, but also quantitatively to derive the turbidity uh, um, estimates here. So we did this, for example, for Woodside Energy in Australia, three years dredging monitoring. This on different spatial scales, delivering them uh, in, here for, in this contract all two days, so uh, one image, in, I mean. Uh, suspended metal chlorophyll on any lakes worldwide, so like as done here for World, World Bank in Lake Titicaca in uh, uh, South America. Then for port authorities or uh, water river agencies, so this is for uh, the federal agency BRB in Germany and the uh, waters uh, agency BFP. So it is, uh, you see here, this is River Elbe, close to Hamburg. And uh, we have multiple, up to multiple imagery per day, and can map here the plume that is going up and down with the tide. 